All right, this is Ryan with Better Tattooing. Uh, to make you a video, whoever you are, I don't know your real name, but well, here we go. Let's do a comparison of what happens with a direct drive versus a push rod rotary machine. All right. Okay, now that's over with a direct drive versus a push rod. Now, this is a good question because a lot of people ask like, which one is more superior? Because everyone is willing to throw out, my shit's the best, and they usually don't have any backing as to why. It just, it just works for them. So if you want to know which ones you should get if you are using a rotary, uh, here we go. I know like the biggest thing is just gonna be like, don't buy a coil just to be a dick, and I'm not like, everything has a purpose. I love rotaries, I love coils, I love tattooing. I, I even love Tabori. And ta -tow. let's do it. Anyways, let's talk about these machines side by side and the motors that work. So a direct drive has a motor with a cam and a fixed little nugget that you end up attaching your needle bar to. And as this spins around, whichever direction or polarization you have it set to, the needle has to spin around. Now doing this, it causes it to come up and down. And one of the things that we're doing is it's not going straight up and down like this, right? As it comes around, the needle has a little bit of a wag, right? So on spin equals wag. The wag happens is just like that, that direct drive is having to adjust the pivot of where that needle is going around that, the, the axis of this thing, right? And what happens is it has a few stall points where the cam as it's spinning is gonna have to adjust where the needle bar is on it, right? Because as it starts to come around, it's gonna have to end up pivoting at some point to allow that needle to end up moving around that the, the nubbins attachment that it's got, right? And as it comes back around as well, it's gonna have to do that. So you have these distinct points of hang where the needle, even if it's running really, really, really fast, <clears throat> it's gonna experience deceleration and even a slight pause. And I mean, this could be you know, nanoseconds in time, but it does happen as that, that cam is adjusting and moving around. You can see this with some like old engines and stuff where they started to figure out exactly what was going on. This is why they installed like push rods into motors to help open and close things, right? Past the fact that the pivot that's going on with this creates a weak point in most systems that are gonna be under high compression, which is kind of like a tattoo machine. <laughs> The, the hang that goes on with this increases the stress on the motor. Now, the, the bonus about this is that if you're trying to do like some of those dot work type of tattoos, direct drives are really, really, really great for them because you can utilize that hang to slow down your stitch rate as it's moving through, right? If you turn down your machine, you're gonna get some distinct little hangs where if your hand is moving faster than your machine is moving up and down, you're gonna get really good stipples coming off of it. Negative is if you move too fast, you end up tearing the skin. So it's very, very, very careful tuning that goes on with this. Usually with these type of machines, because they literally have a very hard, just push slow retreat, you have to have a stronger stretch hand to use one of these. So if you're a person who is smaller in stature, maybe you don't have a lot of hand strength, using a direct drive is probably not gonna give you the same uh, results as it would with a push rod machine, but that's within reason. I mean, I'm thinking about like a four year old tattooing with this. <laughs> Anyone can make a tattoo machine work, uh, but the stretch is really gonna come in handy when you're trying to do more complex techniques with it. Um, to overcome some of the issues that you may have with this, uh, unlike the push rod machine where you can adjust your angles, you literally have to use speed with this to adjust your, your any of the techniques you're putting out. If you want smooth or soft shading or whatever, because that hang is gonna create a space where it, it dictates how fast the actual machine is running, right? So. That is, that's, that's the direct drive. If you're, if you're planning on using one of these, I know a lot of people use them for aligning because you can use them a little bit more like a uh, coil machine by standing them up a bit higher. And so when you're running your lines, because of that hang, it allows some uh, longer hang time inside the skin, which will allow a greater amount of pooling of the pigment around it. So when it's retracted, the hydraulic forces pulling that pigment into it past the initial insertion that's happened are greater. So you, you can get better saturation with these if you really don't know what you're doing, <clears throat> or if you're newer to tattooing and you're still trying to figure stuff out. Um, the, the downfall is, is if you try to use them like a push rod machine or a coil, you will overwork the skin. So there is gonna take some time to get to know how to use these. Uh, next one up are push rod machines. 
So pushrod machines have same thing. We got a motor with a cam attached to it. Usually it's a bevel cam. So what they have is a cam that's set a little bit of a bevel off the back so it has a bit of an angle. And as it spins around, it ends up rotating as well around it, which removes a lot of that hang that we get to see. It doesn't totally remove it, but it reduces it to a point that it's almost negligible. As this is coming around with our, you know, our needle or push bar set on top of this, and we have like a little knocker thingy that comes around and ends up actually hitting a push bar that's different, right? This, this may be lobed uh, or maybe oblong. It may have a two part push rod. There's a whole bunch of really complex things. I don't really need to get into to explain how this works, but there's a lot of ways you can set up a push rod machine. <clears throat> the push rod then will come in contact with a cartridge uh, that ends up being able to tattoo. This is where the bladder inside is really important, right? The construction of the bladder is gonna be the majority of the back pressure, especially in cheaper machines, that's gonna keep that return rate on the needle back. Some more modern machines will end up putting a spring on a return to keep it closer in contact with that lobe as it's rocking around that, that motor so that there's less slap that occurs. And slap is also known as float, is when the machine uh, motor is turning faster than the return rate on the actual push rod. And so what happens is this doesn't have enough time to come fully back up before the lobe is coming back down and it ends up tapping it before it's allowed to fully re return back to its space. And it, it start make, starts making a really weird noise. <laughs> you hear a <laughs> And that's just because the, the actual mechanics inside the return for that push rod are not, are not they're not built for that speed. Now this is not max motor settings, which a lot of those uh, modern push rod machine manufacturers will list. This is actual operation settings, right? Loaded and with voltage, what's the maximum that this thing can actually turn before it starts getting out of alignment and out of whack. And most times we'll say you can run it to 11 volts. The majority of machines that we have tested cannot handle that. <laughs> There's only one and they'll put it up there. We got the FK irons that we tested. Uh, was it FK? No, it wasn't. It was Axis. The Axis, the FK irons one was garbage. The Axis Valhalla was a great one. So, um, yeah, FK, sorry guys, I'm not trying to be mean, but we're not happy with your stuff. Um, so yeah, so the, the push rod machines on these, when they're coming down, they end up hitting that plunger and it depresses the needle, the, the band, spring, everything working in tandem pulls it back up and it just repeats. Now, they do this to avoid that hang, right? With something coming down and knocking it, it's almost like an internal combustion engine, it's pushing and opening basically the valve, right? Allowing ink to spill out. So. Its, its return rate is usually going to be a, a lot more clean. It's going to be a lot quicker. It's going to be <clears throat> more consistent given the quality of the materials that are being utilized inside the machine. Now, some companies have found really unique ways to make this extremely efficient. Other ones, not so much. And I don't want to keep dragging FK, but you know, Bishop is another one that's, that I think has really failed on this. They have nice motors, but the actual, like, internal structures of how these things are built are just, it's, it's nothing special. It's basically just a direct drive machine, again. Um, but we don't need to get into that right now. <laughs> the push rods are really great at just an overall machine, right? They're kind of the middle ground between a direct drive and a coil in their operation. And they are easily manipulated by adjusting angles of insertion when you're getting into the uh, operation. <laughs> And uh, more often than not, the actual machine doesn't really matter too much. What really matters, not even the grade of the needles, but is literally just the bladder and how its operation is gonna impact your tattooing. So that's, that's really important that you find, based on your hand speed, a brand of needles that utilizes these type of membranes that match how you tattoo. And this is where, I, and I, I don't like brands. I think that it's ludicrous that we have some but you can have people who are like, this is the only one that works. Yeah, it works for them because that band, uh, that bladder tension specifically works with how they operate their tattoo machine, right? <clears throat> um, downfall of these ones versus the direct drives. Uh, push rod machines operate at a, a slower speed. There's just more moving parts here. It's harder to time. You can't crank it up to 12 or 13 like you can with a direct drive. Direct drive, you can go until it sparks. It just fucking runs, right? Push rods, you can't. You'll end up getting a lot of that float with that, that cam spinning around trying to hit that push rod. And if there isn't enough of that back pressure on this, the thing just stops working. You'll actually have your needle just hanging out of the skin 
uh, hanging out of the tube and you'll drag it through the skin with only a very small amount of movement inside of it, which really heavily traumatizes the skin. So a push rod machine normally is going to be operated at a much lower voltage in comparison with the direct drive. And it's also going to limit some of the things that you can do. Like a push rod machine for doing stipple work is extremely inefficient and you're more likely to have some type of hang. The hang is because when you start running these at slower speeds, that return is working really, really well, but the motor is also moving much slower, which is going to create an additional amount of hang coming out there, right? It's going to stay out further. It's not going to fully remove that, that idea of how the pivot on the direct drive is going to create hang inside the skin. Now we just have it's running so much slower. Like this is running, a direct drive is running at 10,000 RPM. This one may be running at about 5,000. So half the speed means half the hand speed, which means more money if you charge by the hour. But if you don't, you go by the piece, you're probably going to end up scarring up the skin more. Uh, I think that's it. I've talked for a while. I don't even remember what I've talked about, but we talked about this. <laughs> Let me know if this was good enough. If any questions I didn't answer uh, aren't on here, hit me up in the uh, comments. I'll answer them down there. Uh, but pass that for now. That's direct drive versus push rod. Hope you liked it. Like, subscribe, all that stuff. I'm walking away now. Talk to you later. Bye.